Okay, uh, today I'm going to go through a very quick violin plot. It's quite late here, so I'm going to try to get through this pretty quickly. Uh, it's very similar to a box plot, and I'm actually going to put a box plot inside of our violin plot. Um, so we'll go through this. I've already kind of generated some random data. This is actually the same data I used uh, a few videos back. Uh, but it's just basically, uh, I'll, well, I'll just pull it up and show you. I've got IDs, so this would be like, you know, participant IDs or something, time point, and then a score. This is just random number generators here. And I've got the same participants going through, you know, whatever it would be, some kind of intervention or something twice. So you could think of this as like a pre-post intervention or something like that. And they've got scores uh, from each of the two time points. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to plot pre-post as a violin plot. And then this here, uh, that's what, all of this stuff is it's just generating that data frame this here is just setting my theme so this is all um, visual stuff so you know I encourage you to look into just creating your own theme make things visually pleasing but let's get into the actual plotting down here okay so it's very easy we're just gonna say ggplot we'll call in the data frame that you're working with We'll call in the aesthetics for our X and our Y. Our X is going to be equal to time. So on our X axis, we want our time points. And our Y axis, we wanna look at score. So we wanna see how score changes over time. And then, shocker, there is a geom violin. All right, so we're gonna call that in. And then we will call in a classic theme and the theme that we generated just above. All right, so let's take a look at that. See, so there you go, this is a violin plot. Now a violin plot is nice because it gives you an idea of the spread of the data. So the other thing is that it's kind of what it gives you, um, gives you an idea of the distribution of the data within each time point. And so if we were to put on top of this a geom box plot, we'll see what that looks like. I think we'll probably have to make it thinner. Yeah, so you see there is our box plot within, or now they're on top of the, uh, the violin plot. So I think what we can do is just call in like a width parameter 0.3. Oh, let's go smaller 0.1. Yeah, so you can call you can uh, adjust the width in those box plots. And then you can get really crazy, right? And call in geo point. And you can put the points on top of that too. And you can see, so for example, in time two, you see how it's bimodal with a large hump up top and then a large hump down and below. And this kind of indentation in the middle, well, that's because there's not a lot of data in the middle there. So that's what this is giving us, it's giving us these distributions. Now this long, flatter violin is suggesting that the data is really spread out across the entire uh, spectrum of scores. And so that's why we're just not seeing um, as pronounced uh, I guess kind of bumps in the violin as we're seeing for time two. And you can go in and you can, you know, you can add whatever you want here. So if we wanted to fill these um, by time, then we could do that, add some color to it, All right? And so on and so forth. You go in and make these look as, as great as you want, but I'm gonna keep this one quick because it's late and uh, I've got some other stuff to get to. These are violin plots, cool way to show distribution and then you know you very often see box plots within them so pretty common and of course you can jitter these points too you can do all that fun stuff we typically do with this all right if you have any questions let me know um reach out to me i'm gonna link all my socials and everything down below all right have a good night